I already said it, but it's good to be in the Lord's house. Amen. I'm thankful for the Spirit of God that moved before the preaching hour. Amen. 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 And uh, thankful for people that don't want to hinder the Spirit moving before the preaching hour. Okay. Uh, Amen. Uh, we're going to turn to familiar scripture this morning. If you're doing what you should as a Christian, most of it should be familiar to you wherever you turn. Uh, but we'll go to the book of Mark, chapter 5, this morning. This is one of my favorite places in the gospel, dealing with the maniac of Gadara. Um, I preach down this text a lot of times, but I'm going to preach it differently this morning. I've had uh, a couple of people ask me about this, and uh, we're seeing sort of a thing take off. I, I say take off. It's catching a lot more popularity uh, than, than we have really noticed in, in a while in our nation of, of something called deliverance and dealing with uh, devil possession and things of that nature. And so uh, I've had people ask me before if we could do something along that. Uh, and of course, I just pray when God gives me liberty, I go with it. And so here we are this morning, and uh, I want us to look at some things. You, you can't, uh, I want us to make this statement first, because when you say devil possession, people in the modern American church immediately want to shut their ears off and, and act like it's not real anymore, more, but we got to understand it's still real today. And uh, yes. amen. 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 Now, I'm not trying to freak anybody out, but I want to tell you what the Bible says about it. Right. And uh our problem, remember here a while back, I preached about us being jaded about stuff. This is probably one of the main things we're jaded about because right. we've let Helen yes. Weird show us a bunch of freak show movies that don't always look like demonic possession in real life. It's, it's yep. completely right. uh, yes. different and sometimes over-exaggerated. Now, I know sometimes scripturally we can find where things were being done that were pretty... Um, exaggerated in terms of what we would see in our minds and not exaggerated in that there was lie but but just the extent of some of the things that people that were devil possessed did and uh, I, I feel at liberty to uh, go with this this morning I hope everybody tunes in and, and pays attention and doesn't uh, no, I'm not I'm not running with the crew today that, that, that I'm not trying to jump on this bandwagon if God ever did something like that in our church and it was of God more power to him and, and, and I'd be obedient to that. Uh, but I, I will tell you that I, I chased after one here a while back uh, for a few services with the gospel because I know that there is a devil that's been in this service. I, I don't doubt that. Right. I'm aware yes. of that. Right. And you say yes. that today, and people are like, oh, I don't know about all that. Uh, let, let me give you a few things this morning. The devil comes to church just like you do every that's Sunday. Right. Amen. And, and we, need to, we need to quit acting like he doesn't. That's his job <laughs> is to come after those that are working for the that's Lord right. or trying yes. to serve Amen. the Lord. That's right. And, and so when you get saved, right, you're never no longer you're, you're no longer under His dominion. You're under the Lord's dominion, and so uh, you need to understand Luke four thirty three fifty six. You'll find uh, a devil being a, de a devil possessed person being in the synagogue in the church house. Uh, we see children in Matthew seventeen and Luke nine can be uh, devil possessed. Now uh, I don't know the age exactly and, and how all that works, but we just see that a boy came and, and, and besieged Christ on behalf of his son. Well, now, now here's the big question of the century, right? This is what everyone asks. People get mad when you talk about this. People get frustrated and they say, some believe Christians can't be devil-possessed, some believe they can be, and round and round it goes. And, and, and I want you to think about this for a second. I, I would look at it in terms of oppression more than possession when dealing with a born-again believer. Right. That, Amen. That, that is the scriptural approach I would take because uh, when, when the devil's possessing you, that means he, he has everything about you. Now, if you're right. saved, you've got the Holy Ghost, so he can't have everything. That's right. So That's right. I, I would tell you to venture into oppression. Now, the devil can oppress Christians. I don't doubt that today. That's you, right. That's I can scripturally right. tell you that today. Jesus, he looked at Peter and he said, get thee behind me, Satan. That's Satan right. put something Amen. in That's Peter's right. mouth to say something to him about him being crucified. And he said, get thee behind me, Satan. He didn't, said, he didn't say, Peter, you need to get your head out of the clouds. He said, get thee behind That's me, right. Satan. That's Amen. Right. Amen. Who did, uh, who did James tell to resist the devil and he will flee? Christians. Yep. Who did Peter say, be sober, be vigilant, your adversary, the devil? Whose adversary? Ours, okay. Christians. Right. He's trying to uh, oppress us and deal with us and influence us. And uh, you, you know why you can't get people to get faithful to God anymore? Because the devil said something their way. That's right. That's right. So, so don't, don't tell me that he doesn't oppress Christian people. You, you, you can't say that. When, when, when you wake up on a Sunday morning and you begin to have these thoughts about why you probably should stay home and not come to God's house and not worship and not do this, that's not from God today. That's, that's, right. Right. that's right. They come from one enemy today, and that is the devil. Yes. Right. 
So I want to deal with this this morning. I'm going to read you the story. We'll sit and I'll, I'll show you some things. Uh, I, I've listened to messages preached about this. Uh, I, I guess you could say I'm copying notes. All I'm doing is copying scripture uh, for what we could look at this morning. Now, uh, I, I, I feel led to say this this morning, I guess, for a title. America, blessed or possessed? That, that's going to be my title today. America, blessed or possessed? And we'll look at signs of devil possession. Uh, I, I, might, I might say demon. I'm aware that your King James Bible doesn't say demon anywhere in it. But we're all used to that terminology. It ain't going to send you to hell for saying the word demon. we got to get a grip sometimes. Everybody on, on board with that? Amen. And it came over under the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had often been bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Now this is what we will be looking at this morning, but I cannot read you this text without showing you what our blessed Lord and Savior can do for you today. Amen. If you're being oppressed by demons, or if you are actually, in fact, possessed of a devil. And always, or but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. You realize it's not the maniac that comes and worships Jesus at this That's text, right. right? It's the demon. That's right. the, the devil runs up and runs and worships him, and the next text, he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Do you understand? The devil is in subjection to God. You want to get away from oppression in your life? Get close to God. Amen. Now don't think I ain't dealt with some oppression in the last 24 hours over this message. <laughs> I'll just tell you real brief when I get done with the text. And he asked him, what is thy name? Er, uh, verse 8, for he said unto him, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. Now, if you if you study the word Legion, I mean, we're talking thousands. Yes. Right. Everybody agree with that? Do you know that? Yep. You say, well, how can a thousand demons? Yeah, that, that's a deeper study for another yes. time, but it's doable. That's yes. Right. <laughs> uh, just rest assured. Now, there was, uh, and he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now, there was... There and I under the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils beside him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out. The, the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a <laughs> steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 now, uh, and they were choked in the sea. Here's how you can compare your legion text. How many swine ran off into the sea that were filled with the devils? Two, about 2,000. <laughs> Your Bible will define itself if you begin to read in, in your context. Yes. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and the country and went out to see what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed. Listen here. They came to Jesus and seen him that was. Everybody remember was in his life? Yes. When you was one way and now you're another because of Jesus. Amen. Seen him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were sore afraid. I'm going to stop there. Lord, let us uh, let us just honor you and give you glory this morning. Father God, I pray, Lord, that your word would just reach and touch and help us this morning. God, I know that a message like this will not be preached without some backlash from the enemy. Father, I pray that you'd help me and encourage me and put a protection around me in the next few days and the rest of my life, God, from our adversary. Father, I know it's our job to stand up and fight to flee and to put on the armor of God. I pray you would help me to do that, Father, but I, I pray that you would help any of the uh, attacks that would come maybe within the next few days or the weeks to pass over uh, calling the enemy out this morning, Father. God, I pray if there's any in this sanctuary that is being oppressed by devils today, Father, that you would touch them and help them and show them, God. Lord, I pray if there's one in our midst that is devil-possessed this morning, Father. God, I pray that you would touch them. Father, they would run, they would come, they would worship, and they would surrender for the one that can, that can make us clean and can make us whole and put the devil back where he belongs today, Father. Lord, I pray that you will be done, or that, that we would be subjection to your will. I don't pray that you will be done because it will be done. Father, I pray that you would help us this morning. God, if there's one in our midst that's lost and undone without the Lord Jesus 
Jesus Christ, Father, I pray you'd pull on their heartstrings, you'd touch them, you'd draw them to an old-fashioned altar and to a very, much, very, very much relevant Lord Jesus Christ today, Father. Lord, I love you. I praise you. I ask for it in the name of Jesus this morning. And everyone said, Amen. 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 You're welcome to be seated in the presence of God this morning. Now, I know, like I said, you, you start talking about devil stuff and people get all weirded out and people get this way. I'm going to tell you something about devil stuff. Uh, we, when, when God began to give me liberty to preach this, I hymned the message up last night and finished writing out what I was going to uh, felt led to put down and what I felt like God wanted me to say. And it was immediately like I felt the spirit of, of just darkness overshadow me and my mind and my attitude. Brother Gary, for as long as I can remember, I've always been pretty relatively excited about church, regardless of what my week was like. Amen. Amen. I've always been, and like even, even if Saturday night I was feeling rough, I get up Sunday morning and be like, bless God, let's go, we're going to the Lord's house, this is all going to be better, Amen. things are going to be good, Amen. God's going to help me. I didn't feel that way today. I didn't feel that way when I woke up this morning. I felt sort of down and, and, and sort of in the dumps, and I'm not upset about nothing. I'm not sad about nothing, so I know that the devil tries to oppress us. And you know why he was doing that? Because I'm bringing you a message That's today right. to help you yeah. show you things yeah. and look for things to identify the enemy today. That's right. Now, I'm not, 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 I'm not talking about the charismatic movement and the Benny Hinn stuff and knocking people <laughs> in the forehead and this and that. I don't get on board with some of that stuff. Oh, 90% of that stuff I'm not on board with. Now, if someone's got a devil and they want it cashed out, I get on board with that. Amen. I know Brother Mike, Mike, Mike Hutzel that preaches dent revival had that experience in Africa. I know it's still... Very relevant today. We just don't see it in America in the way third world countries see it because we're jaded over here. That's right. the, the devil, he, he needs not to do much other than just sort of lurk around and hang around and we don't really notice nothing because we're, we're so ate up with hell and the world and the cares of the world. Anyway, we can care less about the enemy. Your average Christian today ain't really worried and looking for the enemy today. I gunned for him a few weeks back. I was gunning for him. That's a dangerous place to put yourself in. But I was, buddy, I was trying to lay the gospel out there and see if it would come out that way. And it won't. See, people, you can think I'm crazy this morning. That's fine. But I assure you, we, we, we have a devil that comes into our service, maybe a legion, maybe one, maybe five, maybe like Mary Magdalene. I don't know, but I'm just telling you that until we start paying attention to the enemy, until we start looking for things, until, until we start opening our eyes today, we're in trouble. That's right. That's right. Now, I want you to understand something this morning. I'm going to give you signs of deep devil possession. Now, there's different places you can see where people have been uh, possessed or, or messed with by unclean spirits. That's something else your KJV calls them this morning. But I'm going to use the word devil possession. Uh, he, he, he comes to the gatherings. This man comes up to him, meets him out of the tombs. I'm going to say the number one sign, number one on my list of signs, not number one in its uh, importance, <laughs> but the number one thing I've wrote down this morning is that he, 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 when he showed up, if you go and read this uh, in the book of Luke this morning, you'll see one detail different. It says he was naked. Everybody got that? Yeah. Now, now, Brother Gary, this is what I call easy preaching this morning because one thing that's a sure, sure tell of someone being influenced of the enemy or being possessed of the enemy is they want to be naked all the time. That's right. They want to show their body off all the time. They want to they want to show all the goods and show it to the world and this and that. And, you, and, and people get real mad when you preach about this, but we're very blessed in this church with women that believe in modesty. I'm thankful Amen. for that. Uh, but, but I'm just telling you right now, you say, so all these girls out here wearing these short clothes and this and that, they're devil possessed. I'm not saying that, but they're being influenced to do That's it. Right. Right. Preaching. They're being influenced to do that. You you got a you got a sick problem when you're wanting every man, especially as dumb and as filthy as we are, to look your way today. Amen. If you're trying to get attention that way, buddy, you're hard up this morning. That's right. You're in rough shape. If you want someone like me or someone like some other man in this church to be looking your way, you must be desperate. That's all I'm gonna tell you today. Amen. I got no use for the, 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 the sleazy, sloppy, slutty dressing today. I got no use for it. I, I got no use for it. We got God created you. He loves you, and he wants you to be adored, not to be a whore. You know who used to like them kind of clothes? Lost shame. Lost guys in this church. If some of these women out here heard what I've heard grown, perverted men say about just yoga pants alone, buddy, you wear something to cover them yoga pants up at least down to here, because I've heard some filthy, nasty perverts run some nasty, filthy things off their mouth over something stupid, a simple type pants. 
Preach it. America possessed or blessed today. Amen. It's not normal and it's not cool to wear clothes that cover your body today. That's right. I've heard a lot of these women talk about even trying to shop for clothes that cover up. You can't That's hardly right. find it. That's right. Amen. That's right. No clothes. That, that naked is a telltale sign of demonic influence. You can disagree yeah, with that until you're blue right. in the face. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't want men looking at my wife Amen. Amen. and thinking things and saying things that I've heard men say. That That's not, she shouldn't want that and you shouldn't Amen. want that for your wife. That's that's right. Right. Amen. She's Amen. my wife, not their that's wife. Right. Amen. She's a child of God, not a billboard of the world to show that's off. Right. Right. I, I see it, guys, and I'm not trying to rant, but I see people that have been rooted and grounded in the, 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 the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that let their daughters wear some of the nastiest stuff Amen. I've ever seen. Amen. And parade them around on Facebook, which is a great place for perverts to scope out their fans. And I think, what is wrong with these people? Amen. And I immediately think devil, That's influence, right. possession or oppression. I don't know. I can't define that for them. But you can rest assured, my daughter's going to have a rough go of it in my household. She ain't going to wear what she wants. Amen. <laughs> nope, ain't going to happen. You'll see bonfires out at the Hammonds homestead. If they Amen. Amen. Yep. You, you, you don't think we're in bad shape, devil-wise, with, with whore, and men are guilty of this too. Everybody get that? Yes. I'm not Amen. just picking on the ladies. You men that think you need to jog down the street with your shirt off and show off your muscles and this and that. It don't impress me, and it shouldn't impress me. Because I ain't like that. But, but I never think, I never look at a man that's cut and shaved and think, man, he's got big muscles. I sure wish I'd work out. No, I think it's disgusting, you sweaty pig. Put your shirt on. And, and quit trying to get women to look at you. Buddy. Find something better to do. Let, 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 let the opposite sex be attracted you to, you, to you today if you're a single person because of your devotion to Amen. God. Amen. Because, because God's answering right. prayers in your life. Amen. Because you go to a church that may not have the best pastor, but buddy, we lay it down. Amen. 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 Let someone be attracted to you because of the godly attributes Amen. in you. Amen. Look at the Satan's attributes That's in you. Right. Any of you young kids in here, single women, single men, you want to find somebody that, that spends time on their knees and reading and studying and praying yes. over how they look yes. in a t-shirt yes. or how they look in a bikini. I've shared this before, and I don't mean nothing mean by it, ladies, but you know as well as I do, we don't look the same after 12, 13, 14, yes. 15 years. Yes. Hey, yes. Things go downhill when you get into your thirties and forties. Yes. If you build love and you build a relationship off what they That's look like right. when they're 19, 20 years old and how much they can show it off and how good they can get dolled up, you're in, a, you're in for a sore, That's sore, right. sore trouble. Right. Yeah. Buddy, when that 30s and 40s and 50s rolls around, you can't paint it up and you can't look as good as you used to. Yeah. Not that I ever look good, but I'm sure I'm better looking a little bit than I, look, than I am now. But, but, but do you all agree this morning that we, we're, we're possessed in America? Yeah. I mean, when you talk about devil possession and you talk about nakedness, there goes the porn industry right there. That's right. That is a devil ran outfit. Amen. There's nothing godly or light about any of that trash. It will not do nothing but condemn you and mess your mind up because right. it's straight out of hell. Amen. That's all there is to it. My oh my, man, if we could, uh, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I've been delivered. I, I, I struggled with that when I was a lost man, but I'm telling you right now, I wonder this morning if God can come down and scroll through our phone, maybe text that's been sent, the history in our Facebook, the history in our browser. I wonder Amen. if we feel real comfortable that's about right. it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, what you're doing is opening the door for the enemy. That's, that's, right. Right. that's right. That's all you're doing today. Yep. Women, I don't know what y'all like to look at, but you, you mess around with that junk, the devil's getting a foothold. Right. Just right. finding an avenue to get in and tear yes. you yes. apart today. Yes. Yes. That's right. See, that affinity, that wanting to be half naked, that wanting to be show everybody off and hoping you look good. And I'm not talking about wanting to be healthy and be in better shape, but if because you want to be healthy, it's so you can look good in a bikini or a pair of swimming trunks at the lake this summer, you're wrong. That's right. Because when you think that, you say, well, preacher, I just want my man to, to like the way I look. That's fine. Cover yourself up when you're in public. When you That's get home right. behind your own doors, let him appreciate the work you've done. Amen. That's all you got to do. Yep. 
But no, 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 no. We see it all the time on Facebook, the selfies, the duck faces, the showing yourself off in the mirror. Buddy, I've seen some. I've seen some that dress like little harlots, and yep. it doesn't make me mad as much as it makes me sad for them. Amen. 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 To be so hungry for the attention of every lost, scoundrel, filthy pile of trash in this world that breaks my heart. Amen. Amen. Preach it, yep. brother. Preach it. A lot of times people call that daddy issues, but I can't necessarily testify to that because I don't know every woman's story. But you got issues when you're worried about what everyone thinks your body looks like. Uh, yeah. That's for you. That's for the Lord. He created you. And that's for your husband, your future husband, your wife, your future wife. Whatever it is, that's it's right. not for the world. Today. That's right. That's right. But I'm, I'm talking about <laughs> devil possession today. Devil oppression. You, you, you see, when someone's got an, an obsession with that, wanting to be half naked, wanting to show off everything, that, that's a good one to check off your list and say, okay, now we're going to do a few more checks and see if any of these line up. Everybody got that? Amen. The man came out of the tombs, and, and, and in uh, uh, Luke, we see he was naked. Uh, when you get to the good part of the story where Jesus healed him, it says he was clothed and in his right Amen. mind. Amen. The Bible says you're out of your mind when you don't want to wear clothes. That's right. And, and, and I think, like uh, Brother Lester Roloff said, America is an insane asylum ran by the inmates. That's right. right. Yep. That, that, that's where we're at today. Now, look where he come running from. Does anybody notice where he come running from? He had his dwelling among the what? The tombs. Yeah. A devil-possessed person has an affinity with dead things, dead people, or things, like I said, things that regard around death and darkness and things like that, that's a good sign to look for in devil possession. That's right. That's right. Or oppression. Now, I put spiritual and physical. There's people that are physically obsessed with death. That's right. Yeah. That, that we, we, we used to deem these in high school, I don't know what they call them now, goth, wearing all black, and sort of being from that dark area of life or whatever it all is. I didn't look up the definition, but they always had this weird affinity with death. Witchcraft, evil satanic events, television, things like that. When, 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 you, when, when, you, when you're obsessed with seeing people just be slaughtered, that's weird to me. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about reading history books and understanding sort of wars that took place, but when you like to visually see that stuff, uh, and I used to when I was lost, but that's because I'm devil-possessed. That's right. Yep. That's right. That's but, but when you've got this weird affinity to just see blood and horror and terror all the time, there's something missing there. Amen. That's right. That it, it is. When you get joy out of it. See, I don't get joy out of reading about how much blood was shed in the world wars. I get it for learning purposes. I, it never makes me feel good or That's satisfied right, to read about that. Right, if anything, right. it breaks my heart. But there's yes. people out here. I mean, Netflix has made billions off filth and, and, and just blood. Like, like, like we're obsessed with it. Yep. We, we can't yes. get enough of it. we right. we, we got to have more of it. That, that's a telltale sign you've got something outside of yourself pushing buttons in your life. That's right. That's right. Amen. You can disagree with that till you're blue in the face, but uh, this man had his dwelling among the tombs. He wanted to be around the dead people. I, I, I'll say this, they want to run with spiritually dead people too. That's right. That's right. People that are dead spiritually, that are dead in their sins, dead in their trespasses, a demon-possessed person would love nothing more than to yoke up with them, folks. That's right. They want to hang out with people that don't believe that. You, you know how I can prove that to you today? Because they don't want to be around Christians. That's right. That's right. They despise church. And I'm dealing with America as a whole, but looking individually, let me deal with America. America wants the church out of here, guys. That's right. Why is that? Because they're devil-possessed. That's right. Everything that happens in this place irritates their demons. That That's right. Them, Amen. And they don't like that. Yep. Homosexuality, right. all the filthy other sexual sins taking place, the pornography, the abortions, that's devil. That's yep. right. We preach against it. It irritates their demons. Amen. They want us Amen. out. Yes. And they want to be the ones in. Amen. Yep. And buddy, we ain't far from it. <laughs> we, we ain't far from it. We ain't far from it at all this morning. A, a, a person <laughs> that is devil possessed or being oppressed by a devil, they've got an affinity for dead things. Dead people spiritually, dead people physically, things of that nature. And, and, and you can take for what you want. I ain't got time to preach it. Witchcraft, all that stuff. I, I don't look into that because I don't fool with none of it. That's right. But if it's dark and it's evil and stuff like that, you better be careful how many Amen. doors you open. Amen. You better be careful Amen. the window you're cranking open because yes. you never know what may come through the other yes. side. Yes. Right. If you was to bring me the movie <laughs> The Exorcist today and say, hey, I need you to hold this in your house for me for a while because I, 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 for whatever reason, nope. what would happen? That's right. I ain't bringing it in my house. That's right. You say you really believe all that? Yeah, I believe yes. things are attached to things. Yes. I believe devils yes. leech and latch yes. on to things. Yes. And then when you bring that stuff into your home, into your abode, yes. 
Yep. You cause problems. That's yes. right. Yes, I won't have it around. I don't need it. Yep. Right. I'm just telling you this morning, it's hard enough to get up and try to preach against this stuff in the way it makes me feel. Uh, not not me personally, but, but the way me personally, but the way the devil makes me feel. That's right. right. Yes. When, when you you don't gun for the enemy like that. And not, not get some spirit of oppression or some spirit of darkness, some cloud of darkness, whatever you want to call it. You know why he's doing that? He was trying to frustrate me and discourage me so That's much right. that I wouldn't want to come to church. That's, That's right. right. He don't like what I'm preaching today. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. People have an affinity for dead people spiritually, physically. It's blood, 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 <laughs> blood. That's our obsession today in this nation. That's right. The Bible's right. a bloody book. That's right. But I don't ever read about. There's only one blood I read about that I'm thankful Amen. for. Amen. But I don't find joy in the blood that was shed in terms of it makes me feel good yeah. that that had to happen. Right. Yeah. Yep. One blood shed you should be concerned about today over all the others, and that's the blood that was shed at Calvary. Amen. Amen. I want to say number three. They said no man could tame him. Preached here a while back and dealt with rebellion. We, we are in a rebellious nation. That's right. America blessed or possessed. I'd say possessed just off rebellion alone That's today. Right. That's another one of them easy preaching spots. Brother Gary, I was talking about like our dress uh, taste in America today is the concept of rebellion. It couldn't be tamed. No matter what. Now you say, well, your kids rebel. <laughs> our kids will rebel in this church and try to do stuff, but they get lined out. That's and right. they get right back. That's right. I'm talking about parents today like Brother Tim tells me he deals with being in law enforcement. They can give a rip less because they have just they, they can't get no control over their kid. Right. They, they can't do that. Some of them could, but they won't take the route that needs to be taken. Amen. Right. 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 Amen. But I'm just telling you this morning, rebellion's a good sign of that. No one can tame him. Everybody tried to bound him with this and bind him with chains, and, and, and he busted, he teared asunder, he wouldn't stay quiet, he wouldn't stay where they wanted him to stay. That is rebellion today. Right. Rebellion is, is the sin of witchcraft. Everybody remember that? Yes. Witchcraft is yes. a sign of having an affinity for dead things or wicked things, which is a telltale sign of devil possession right. or oppression today. Yep. Rebellion, he couldn't be tamed. I, I'm going to share this note that I heard Dr. Ruckman say. He talked about people that have no response to anything. He said that's a telltale sign of a devil-possessed person. They have no response to nothing. You say something happy, they don't grin. You say something sad, they don't cry. You say something funny, they don't laugh. They just sit there in the same state of mind, same frame yeah, of yeah, face, yes. dazing off into la-la land, give a rip less what's going on around that's them. Right. That's, that's right. right. That's a good sign of devil possession. That's right. Yep. It ain't normal for humans to not feel any emotion about anything Amen. all the time. Amen. <laughs> but, and, and, and some of you mean, well, I'm just not an emotional person. Yeah, but you are at times, whatever it really Amen. needs to happen. Amen. When, when you can take a time when something should be definitely an emotional reaction, there should be some great cause, and thus there should be some great effect for an emotion, and it's blank. But you got problems. That's right. You got problems. There's something wrong. There's something wrong. And everybody in here can agree with, uh, disagree with this say you want. Uh, until you blue in the face. But go read the scriptures. That's Search right. the scriptures. Amen. See what they say about it. No response to sad, happy, mad, nothing. We're in an age of rebellion today, church. That's right. That's right. I expect my youngins to try to rebel here and there, not do what they're told. I expect that. But a full-blown rebellion like we see in the youth in America today, that's demonic. That's, right. that, that, that's evil. And a lot of us come from the parents and the generation that let up on their kids and didn't expect any uh, discipline, didn't hold them responsible for nothing. I'm aware of that. But see, when you drop the ball like that as a parent, then you open the door for that's your right. children to be in right. right. So that's why we, we got a serious job to do it here today as parents. Because anywhere I drop the ball, maybe I, and, and, and this goes for anything, the filth you watch at home on your television, That's if your right. children are there, what kind of door are you opening up for them? That's right. right. That's why we got to watch. That's why we got to be careful. That's why we got to pay attention. I've broke cell phones. I've smashed cell phones. Probably smashed a few before my life's done and over with on this planet. But I ain't tolerating it today. Amen. Amen. I'm not letting the enemy just come in and full ramrod my house. Because I was too lazy and stupid to do anything about Amen. it. Amen. Right. Yeah. There you go. But we got parents today that just let it in. There you That's go. Right. Right. That's that right. looks like a good babysitter. And we're all guilty of letting our kids watch. To, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. When you let them watch whatever they want. When they get to look at whatever they want. When they get to be uh, entangled with whatever they want. It, it, they're a child today, church. That's they don't right. get to do whatever they want. That's they do right. what they're told. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Almost like we forgot that in modern parenting today. Children, parent. I tell my kids that a lot. Yep. Child, right. parent. Amen. I remind them. 
Amen. Yep. And you say, Amen. well, that's just mean and that's just wanting control. It is my job to control that's them. Right. It is my job Amen. to withhold Amen. things from them. If, if you, you think, if you, you parents think you can step back and just let them make their own choices, you know who's going to come running the call? <laughs> the enemy. That's right. That's right. Uh, he loves these lib libtard uh, modern parents that think that you shouldn't do anything to your children. Just let them be free spirits and don't stifle their creativity and just let them run wild. He, but he likes that. You and him got something in common. Right. Right. That's right. all he needs. Rub his hands together and say, yes, sir. Now here I come. I'm going to show him the filth of this world, the filth of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. I'm going to throw everything at them that will draw them so far from Christ that maybe they'll come spend an eternity with me. Yep. That's right. Yep. You ain't doing them no favor by letting them choose things on their own. Right. Now, I understand we, we give them choices to teach them responsibility, but brothers and sisters, things that can damn their soul, things that can tear their walk with God away, things that can do this and do that, all spiritual matters. No, no, no. We make the decision as parents. Amen. Yep. Amen. I know parents today. Well, we just ain't been, we didn't go to church because the kids didn't, didn't want to get up. <laughs> you lost your mind. <laughs> Yeah. Nah, no, no, no. I better be careful. We're going to get turned in this morning. But Come on, preach. Kids don't run the house. That's right. Amen. 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 I love all these kids. I'd do anything for them, but they're not going to decide what direction the church goes. Amen. They, they, they ain't going to yes, determine. My, my kids ain't going to determine whether we get up Sunday morning and come Amen. serve God. Amen. And, buddy, I know some. I'm related to some that's made that same. Well, they just couldn't get, couldn't get them out of bed. Go in there and grab them by the foot and drag them out of the bed. Go in there with a pitcher of ice water. Be tempted to ask that stuff when Jeremy is grown men. You think I'm going to my kids? That's the reason I had kids, so I can do that kind of stuff. No, no. I went in there with all the men got me a blower. The first thing I did when I got a blower for my birthday one year, I waited until the next morning to get up and turn that dude on full blast and blow their faces off while they were asleep. <laughs> Hilarious. You talking about someone wake up with like devil stuff Amen. going on. They thought the world was coming to an end. <laughs> so no, 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 no. I love my kids, but they ain't going to determine whether we go to church. Amen. 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 That, 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 that ain't what's going to happen. We, 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 we got to do our best to tame them. Everybody right. understand that? Yeah. Because if you don't, the spirit of rebellion will get in them, and that spirit of rebellion will lead them to, they'll be, they'll be meeting up with Tim a lot. They'll be meeting up with, with County a lot. That's right. So I, I say this all the time. Some of you kids ought to go see what Tim deals with. Let's go ask him what he deals with. Amen. With kids. Amen. With, with kids that when he calls them, and I know I always share this, but it blows my mind and breaks my heart. When, 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 when they get a hold of their parents and say, hey, your kid's doing this, and, and, and they're going to get drunk, and they say they cuss them out and say, hey, my problem, you deal with them. Mm, you, you, yeah. you kids ought to be glad that you've got parents that want to drag your hind ends to church yeah. and try to, try to lead Amen. you in the ways of God and try to show yes. you the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. I know we ain't all perfect. I know you see mom and daddy slip and fall and make mistakes, but buddy, I ain't never going to turn my kids up to the world Amen. and say they're not my problem. Amen. You all yeah. deal with them. Ain't going to happen. Yes, and they ain't going to rebel under my roof so much Amen. that they just walk all over mom and daddy. Amen. Yeah. I didn't get plan on, I didn't plan on getting hung up here this long. But, but I feel like we need it in the nation. Yeah. Yeah. My kids pull funny stuff with me from time to time. You want, you want, Daddy, if you want to talk about something, ticks me off when they start running their mouth to their mama. Uh -huh. Amen. That, that, that one will get me out of my recliner and on my feet. Amen. Yes, sir. Yeah. I don't deal with that. You young and you need to respect your mamas. That's right. You need to respect Amen. your dads too, but you need to respect mama because she's the one cooking your meals. Amen. Amen. Things could go south in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these kids ain't never heard the old saying about I brought you into this world, I can take you out. Amen. 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 Heard that one a few times when I was a kid. And I think my mom meant it from time to time. Amen. And uh, I probably deserved it from time to time. But listen, they couldn't be tamed. You want to tell tell sign of devil devil stuff, oppression, possession, whatever it is you want to put there. Because I, I I'm not going to say a Christian can be possessed by the devil, but they can be oppressed by the devil. I don't that's doubt right. that for a second. That's yeah. right. When you get saved, that that's not your flesh that gets saved. Everybody understand that's that, right. doctor? Yeah. 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 So that means all this extremity, all that stuff. It, it's fair game unless we are trying to keep it tame. Right. Unless we are being in subjection to the That's word. Right. Unless we are being in subjection Preach to God. Yes. Come on. But you let your eyes not be in subjection to God, the enemy will give you something to look at. Right. You let your hands not be in subjection to God, he'll give you something to hold on to or something to do that you don't need to be doing. Right. You, you'll get your feet in subjection to God. He'll he'll allow you and give you something to take you to different places and take you into situations that God would never have you to go. That's right. Yeah. I, I've seen Amen. the enemy. I've seen the enemy get a hold of my mouth before. How about you? Yep. Amen. Amen. 
Got a few amens on that one. I appreciate that. <laughs> We're all being honest. Yep. Everyone in right. here has probably got mad at some point and said something you shouldn't have. Amen. 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 That wouldn't have God. No. Right. <laughs> that, that wouldn't have God. That was the devil. I've been guilty. I've been mad and said something I shouldn't have. Uh, not, not necessarily cussed, but, but just been hateful or mean or, or, or snappy about right. something. Yep. Amen. That's not of God. That's right. That's right. Amen. The next point I'm going to say is, uh, and, and we don't see this one a lot, but, but you notice he was day and night in the mountains and in the tombs crying. Un uncontrollable crying, crying all the time. You say, well, I, don't, I mean, that's just kind of a weird point. I mean, that, that's just one of the signs we see the maniac of Gadara was when he was under the oppression of a legion of devils. Right. Right. He was always crying day and night. Now, I, I'm like the, 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 the few I've listened that's preached about this, that, that I understand there's a time to cry. I mean, with Ecclesiastes 3, there, there's a time to mourn. I preached about the church weeping. That we, we should weep. Right. But uncontrollable yes. all the time for no apparent reason, that's a good sign you can look at. I, I, I'm going to say this much. People are so doped up anymore that this one would probably be one of the least seen ones in our nation today. That's yep. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People are so doped up. And, and I, I, I want everyone to get my words because I'm not saying this this way. Do not, do not twist my words. But I think a lot of times what's done in this nation, a lot of times, not all the time, I think a lot of times we put a medical diagnosis on it instead of calling it what it really is, That's and it's right, devil possession. Right. Amen. Amen. Now, you're, it's America. You're free to disagree with that. I'm not saying everybody that's schizophrenic is devil possessed. I'm not saying that. But what I'm telling you this much is when you look at Scripture and you compare similarities to a lot of things we put a diagnosis on, it's a little creepy. That's right. That's right. It's a little creepy. That's all I'm saying. You, you do it the way you want. It don't matter to me. But I'm just telling you right now, uncontrollable crying. A lot of people so doped up anymore that this probably hardly ever seen. It. <laughs> it's like it's similar to the thought where I've been reading this book off and on. I've had it, it talks about last last minute death. Uh, experiences where people that were saved died and people that were uh, lost and atheists died and it gives descriptions of what they seen, what they said, it make a hair stand up on your neck. That's right. yep. That's right. yeah. But you don't see that a lot anymore because they've got people so doped up before they die, they're out of it. Man. That's right. <laughs> they're, they're in a whole other world and so that's why you might not see that so much. Uh, what do you say? Uh, crying and cutting himself with stones. That's a, that, that's a good telltale sign of devil possession. Yes. Self-harm. We're, we, we, we have dealt with this a lot in the last couple generations in America, yep. people cutting themselves. Yep. Right. It's always a lot of young people. You ever notice right. that? Yes. Uh, I read a lot of statistics from what I can find. One in four girls will do it, and one in ten boys will do self-harm to themselves. That's, right. yep. yes. That's not of God. That's, right. That's not of God. That's of the devil. Yep. When you want to hurt yourself, when you want to cut yourself, or when you get down to the nitty-gritty and want to blow your brains out, that's not of God. Amen. 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 That, that, that's of the devil. Now, I'm not saying when you when you commit suicide, you're going to hell. That's instant. Do not pass, go. To, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying whatever leads you to that point and whatever you do what it is that, that ends your life, that's not of God today. That's right. That's right. That is, that is, that is <laughs> devil possession. And, buddy, we are seeing it more and more. I'm dealing with America as a whole, but I want us to look at this individually. But listen, is America blessed or possessed today? Amen. I mean, we, we, we are in the age of self-harm and anxiety and depression, and I've experienced some of that, but never to the point where I wanted to harm myself. Amen. Amen. Because God's there. Right, and, 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 and you take COVID, what all that bred, and, and I'm not preaching to, you know, blah, blah, blah. COVID bred a lot more than just death from catching COVID. Yep, that's right. Right. There was a flip side to that coin nobody wants to address. And it was people getting suicidal. It was people going through depression. It was people getting anxiety because they were locked up in their homes and treated like slaves. There was another side to that coin. That's right. That's right. I ain't afraid to preach about it. I'm yeah. sorry people died from it. I, I, I feel as bad as I can. But nobody wants to talk about the ones that killed themselves because they got so depressed and so crazy from being locked up. That's nobody right. wants to deal with those deaths. That's right. That's right. Oh, it's almost because like we're possessed instead of blessed over here. That's right. That's right. That's right. Then we see supernatural strength. They bind him with chains. They bind him with fetters. Uh, I, I know, once again, I'm picking on Tim. I know they'll probably see that from time to time. Because usually we always liken it to drugs. And a lot of people that are on drugs get this weird supernatural strength. But I want you to understand something. I did enough drugs in my lost life to understand that it opens doors up to a realm that most people have no flipping clue about in this nation. Right. Yep. I, will, I will swear till the day I die because I have literally lived, breathed it, seen it, done it. That methamphetamines, uh, maybe not right off the, the first high, but the longer you stay up, the more devils come in. I, I will testify to that till I'm blue in the face. Amen. I've seen Preacher. stuff make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. I know there's a few in here that can testify to that. It opens a, it opens a gate into another realm that most Americans, because they're so obsessed with the other filth of this world, have no idea what's going on. That's right. That's right. Say, so, well, I don't know, Preacher. Well, I do. I've seen it. <laughs> 
and I don't doubt it today. I, I, I know it was on a, beyond a shadow of a doubt. But you see, we say, well, the meth heads, man, they get high and they got supernatural strength. They say, they say you can shoot a meth head sometimes several times and they never go down. Is that the amphetamine doing that? Or is that something inside of him that's helping push him that's on? That's right. The drug's yeah. just an avenue <laughs> to get the devil in. And then when that takes place, but now now, now we've got some supernatural strength going that's on. That's right. That's right. A lot of us pushed off on drugs, and there's a reason why. Because a lot of them are on drugs that are devil-possessed. <laughs> that's right. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this this morning, 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the fight, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. You understand that the devil is always trying to blind people's minds today. That's right. And we're, we are in the age of blinded minds. We, we, we are in a generation and in the time frame of blinded minds. The God of this world, who's that? The devil. That's right. He's blinded the minds of them which believe not. So you understand, if you want to talk about devil oppression, at least, anyone who's not a believer is at least being oppressed by the devil. That's, right. yes. That's what the text yes. says. Yes. The God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. So that means at the very least, you're being oppressed or influenced by the devil if you're not a believer today. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Nobody wants to say that. Nobody wants to address that. Nobody wants to deal with that. But, buddy, I will because it's Bible. Yep. Amen. Amen. Is America blessed or is it possessed today? There's a lot of other signs we can look at and different things in Scripture, but I wanted to take one story with the maniac of Gadara because we've got several points right there, bam, 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 that describes what it was like when he was possessed with the legion of devils. Now, I, I say there's a lot of other things. I mean, just, just bad bad addictions to things that, that, that are just destroying your flesh. That ain't of God today. Amen. It's not. And, and, and we know that, but I, I, I just want to share this morning and tell you this much. I know without a shadow of a doubt when a devil's in the room. I know without a shadow of a doubt when there's more than one devil in the room. I, I know without a shadow of a doubt when I roll into... Go, go take you a trip downtown this summer into downtown Springfield when, mm -hmm. when it's about 6 o'clock at night and people are starting to get to the bars, maybe 8 o'clock be a better time when it's... And, and, and go, go tell me we ain't possessed. Amen. Amen. Tim, I think it was, me and Jeremy and Tim, uh, I hadn't been downtown in forever, and, and we were going to Springfield for some reason. Who knows? I mean, I don't go to Springfield unless I absolutely have to. Uh, but, but Tim's like, how long has it been since you've been downtown? I'm like, I don't know. It's been a while. He said, dude, check this out. Took me down there. It was like, I felt like I needed to get saved again just from driving through it. Amen. It was filth. Nasty. Nasty. Women, I mean, women just leaving nothing to the imagination anymore. That's right. Yes. That's right. Amen. I know, and, and I know this sounds sexist, but women's got a worse problem with this because y'all are usually better looking. Okay? <laughs> I'm going to throw that out there. I'm going to throw that out there, but I'm just telling you, women seem to be the ones that have the affinity a lot of times to be noticed by men more than... Uh, men want to be noticed, but we do it through dumb stuff like hurting ourselves or doing something stupid to show off. But I'm just telling you right now that that, that we're demon possessed, we're devil possessed in this nation. <coughs> all, all the powers, the spiritual wickedness in the high places that Paul read, that that that's here and now. That, that that's what we deal with. That's what we're in. I'm just telling you right now. One of those things. I mean, and, and here's one place. I'm going to finish with this. I, I didn't really preach this last Sunday, but I thought about hitting it a lick or two. But for the sake of the topic and the notes I had, I stayed on it. But, but that's my problem with a lot of this modern dress to church. Amen. Amen. When, when, when you watch like that video of Ferdinand, he was real adamant about bending his arms and flexing his muscles with really tight t-shirts so everyone could look at how buff he was. That's right. Yep. Yes. You say, oh, you're putting too much thought into it. No, I know how men are. That's right. He works out. He spends a lot of time doing it, and, and he wants somebody to notice that's it. That's right. Yeah. That, that, that's typically what people do. I mean, people do it for health. But a lot of times it's for people, it's for attention. They want to look better and they want people to look at them and compliment them and it makes them feel good. And so that's why I said, uh, that, that, that's why I'm so adamant about what we wear to church. Amen. Be modest, Amen. man or woman. Be modest. Amen. Cover yourself up. On. You're not, you're not yes. coming here to, to give a buffet bar to all the men to try to Amen. help them stumble Amen. or think Amen. something they shouldn't. Yes. You're here to worship God. That's Amen. right. Amen. Amen. And when you're married, you should want that. Amen. Amen. The, the, nothing, nothing is undefiled, and, and, and the bedroom is pure. I'm misquoting a little bit. Is what when you're married, leave that stuff in your bedroom. Amen. Amen. Leave, leave that stuff for the house. Don't bring it to the house of God. Right. Leave it to the house. That's yes. right. Let's see. We're in a devil possessed time. I believe a lot of this modern stuff. It's under the influence of the devil. I don't doubt it for one blessed second. Amen. 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 So I'm telling you right now. 
I'm not, I'm not running charismatic and all that stuff. I'm, I just wanted to give you some signs to look for with people and maybe help you understand when you're dealing with somebody, you can look at that stuff and say, man, they're like this and they're like that. They're like this and they're like that. Maybe I'm not dealing with just a plain Jane lost person. Maybe I'm dealing with the devil. Amen. There you go. See, if you're, you're going to go out and witness and do what you should as a Christian, you'll run into this stuff. Yeah. And then you'll be, when, exactly when, you, when you can identify your enemy, that changes the game. Amen. There's nothing worse than trying to fight a fight with somebody you don't even know who it is. That's exactly right. You can't do it. You can't fight a fight with somebody. So I'm going to ask whoever's singing come up this morning. And if you're in here this morning, you feel like you're getting oppressed by the devil, don't be ashamed. Be like him. Run up and cry out. Ask Amen. Jesus to touch you. If you hear you're possessed of a devil, bring it, bring it on. Come up and we'll, we'll call out the Lord Jesus Christ to come and deal with it. <clears throat> if nothing else come up and pray for me because I'm not going to say what I said about the enemy and have a good week unless God intervenes and I know God will